Okay, so this video really is to talk you through all the revision materials that you were given in your red folder so that you have a sense of how to use those things. Do remember that um, everything is underpinned by the work in your books and certainly the first part of your revision, you know, go back and look through your books, uh, all those keynotes are in there. But this is sort of bringing you to a point, I suppose, where you're practicing, where you're really thinking about the exam technique. So in overview and admin. Uh, you should find uh, this sheet. This is a summary of what's happening on each exam. I think we're, we're a lot closer now uh, to sort of recognising uh, what's happening in each section. We should be fairly familiar. So in the language exam, you've got paper one and paper two with the timings there. You can also see kind of how the skills relate. So these questions here, question one and question one and two in paper two are all selection. These questions in orange are all really to do with language. A uh, little bit of structure there on question three. Your question four is you evaluate and then that comparison and then you've got the two writing tasks in section B and then of course you've got two more sort of texts in paper one literature and then three jobs to do in paper two literature inspector calls power and conflicts and unseen poetry you've also got your timings and your marks there uh, and on the reverse for those of you with extra time you've got an approximate extra time version uh, this handout revision at a glance is if you like a kind of tick sheet of what you need to do um, so you know the essential revision about learning about you know the, the sentence starters and the method any additional revision that you think might be useful uh, and then we've got sort of aspirational things if, you, if you're really doing an awful lot so you know you might want to use that as a bit of a tick sheet think of it as stages get the essentials done and then see if you can aspire to do even more but if you work through the resources uh, everything's there so in English language paper one section A, um, the best resource probably to pop in there is your walking, talking mock booklet uh, from Miss Mulholland. Looking at those big hitters, we know that questions one to three are quite small. This is reminders about question four and also question five. And, and you might have the example, you can have a go at a couple of those. I have given you the sentence starters for section A, so they're useful as well. Um, and then the second section, uh, obviously is um, section B so I realize these materials might mix up a little bit but what I gave you in there was if you like an essential crib sheet for the descriptive writing task and if you can imagine a picture here or imagine that prompt uh, about you know uh, a time you've been shocked or a time that you've been amazed by something this is kind of like the absolute you know basics of what you need to remember trying to think about your openings and your closings the drop shift zoom structure what you do when you're finished reminder of punctuation you know if you're looking across this and think well I've done a bit of that I've done a bit of that I've done all of that there's a good chance you've done a really effective piece of writing so uh, important handout there Moving on to paper two, uh, I don't have a copy, but you can put your walking, talking mock resource in here. Again, this is a harder paper in some ways, so learning that method is key. Uh, you know, this summary section that you do with the differences. Uh, question three is language, we're, we're pretty good at that. And then question four, these comparative peels that make their way from source A, and then you have this statement of difference into source B. So you've got to do these big comparison peels in question four. Again, section B is the writing task. You've got a massive version of this in your exercise book, an A3 version, but it's just those tips on purpose audience, text type, and signpost in the reader, uh, the types of formats that you can get, and the kind of minimum things you need to do. Remember, it really is your writing and your paragraphs that will secure your mark, but nevertheless, if you get a blog or a leaflet, make sure you do those minimum things that just indicate you know that this is a leaflet with a title, or you know that if it's a speech, you're addressing your audience. So, you know, don't get bogged down in that, but make sure you do enough to make it clear that's what kind of text type it is. Um, some tips on advice and instruction and also persuasion but in reality all of these things meld together you know you're looking for writing techniques and whether you argue or persuade or advise you should still look for those rhetorical moments look for those triplets you know where can you do things with language that are interesting and exciting uh, and as I should have said on the previous one that mark scheme there is the same for both written sections um, you know very important and of course vocabulary doubling up Moving on to literature, you've got an overall revision guide for literature, first of all, ultimate revision guide, and this is full of the gold ideas for every text, uh, some really good sort of single word quotations that are quite easy to remember, and you can sort of drop into the further aspects of your peels quite easily. Um, then you've got your gold quotations as well, and you've got that for all your major texts. So that's quite a chunky resource, very, very useful place to start uh, if you know you're starting from scratch in that sense. Moving forwards, obviously, we're then looking at Romeo and Juliet. What I did with this is you've got a whole range of sort of key extracts from the play. 
they can give you any extracts. And in this one, I actually haven't given you the easy Shakespeare version as well alongside it. So, you know, if, for example, you turn through these, and again, we can't predict the extracts, so you're not, we're not saying these are the extracts that will come up, but if you practice with them, you know, if you turn here and sort of say, okay, you know, we've got this fight here, Romeo and Tybalt, um, the reason I have to love thee does not just excuse the appertaining rage, you know, villain I am none, this idea of good v evil, um, or you might talk about, you know, the, the um, semantic field of insults, you know, rat catcher, uh, you know, you're a villain, all these kinds of things. So you're looking for two examples, aren't you? Where every time with Romeo and Juliet, you know, if you're lucky enough um, to get the prologue, you know, we'll be straight into a pair of star-crossed lovers take their life, and then we might talk about ancient grudge breaks and new mutiny. Always looking for the two things from the extracts and then two gold quotations that go with it. So you use that alongside another copy of the gold and you create those essays, two from the extracts, two gold, and work your way through. So loads of practice there that you can do. Uh, similarly in Frankenstein, okay, we've got some extracts here. Uh, laid out very much like the exam in most cases so you're doing the same job I'm not going to do examples now two or three things from the extracts can you find a semantic field can you find a phrase and then bringing in your gold and with this one except the people that have blue ones you'll have to cut yours out but what you can do with this one is in the middle we've got Frankenstein gold only which you've seen before you can pull that out and use that alongside so you're looking for your two gold quotations from here to go with the two things that you find from the extracts again loads of practice doing an essay plan a night for the last two or three weeks happy days there you've got no problems at all inspector calls essay plans at a glance so here what i've done is i've structured all the different characters i've put in the gold that i suggest you can change that if you prefer other quotations and what you should be doing here is like we did in class looking to annotate who said it what the language is why it's important to the character trying to bring in those context and concepts Similarly, on the theme essays, okay, so if it's the gap between generations, why is that gold quotation relevant? How is it showing that character, the generation gap, bringing in your context and concepts? And those concepts are also at the back, so we've got all that context about an inspector calls. You've also got some official questions, so the actual exam board questions from the past few years, and on the back you've got your method about how you do that. Remember, inspector calls, totally from memory. Then, we're getting near the end, uh, you're well done if you've stuck it this far. So the Power and Conflict exam book, what I did was, you should have your, your, put your cue cards in here as well. Um, so what we've got here is, we've got the Power and Conflict exam book, all the different poems with a different question. And of course what you're going to do in for each one, you're going to link in one of your top five poems. So even though you've got this on cue cards, I've reproduced the top five gold. So you look at one, and you say, right, if it was the prelude, which gold poem am I, which top five, sorry, which top five poem am I linking that with? Okay, if I get a question on kamikaze, which of the top five poems is going to link with that? And you start building that comparative essay uh, where you're probably going to write four peels, two, two gold quotations from the poem and then two gold quotations from your top five poems. Quite a challenge that. If I were you, I'd be spending a lot of time with this handout here making sure that you've learned your essential gold quotations from the five top five poems. I think that is in some ways the hardest poem. It's got the most, sorry, hardest exam. It's got the most variables, all those kinds of things. You'll then have your unseen. Uh, that booklet's with me at the moment, but you'll be getting it soon. Uh, nothing to worry about at all. It's basically just doing those language peels on a poem that you've never seen before. So not, not too challenging at all. Then you do that quick comparison with the second poem. Uh, as I say, you know, make sure you do it. Obviously, don't miss it out. But the skills, to be frank, you've got those skills. You can just look at a poem and pick out the things that you need to talk about. Nothing to worry about at all. Uh, and if you haven't done every single homework task that I've been setting, you know, there's a, a few more tasks in there. If you go on the VLE, there's a couple of past papers for um, the English language, so paper one and paper two English language. Bags of stuff, you know, arguably possibly even too much. But, you know, if you stick to these resources and do a little bit from each of the nine sections when you can over the next few weeks, I'm sure you're going to be really, really well set up. Uh, if you've liked this video, don't forget to like and subscribe, uh, and I shall see you soon.